Joining me right now is Georgia Congressman and Ranking Member of the House Judiciary Committee, Representative Doug Collins. And Congressman, it is always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Very well, glad to be with you. So I want to get to your release of some of the closed door testimony. You just released the transcript of George Papadopoulos' private testimony before the Judiciary Committee. Uh, I'm going to get to that in a second and go through the investigation. But first, your thoughts on what you just heard. Do you believe that Mueller did look at where the real wrongdoing was? For the last two years, all we're hearing about are these, you know, this media narrative that the, the president colluded with Russia. Now we know officially something that we all knew for the last two years. But do you think Mueller actually will investigate or did investigate and look at where the wrongdoing really was, where these perpetrators came up with an investigation into the president, a duly elected president, based on nothing? No predicate, Congressman. You would almost believe he had to, Maria, and I think that's the interesting thing here. And this is the, the, the thing that's happened this week so much with this with the Mueller report coming out, no collusion, no obstruction, and the, and the complete meltdown of the train that was the, the Democrats and the media were on saying, oh, we're headed toward you know, impeachment, we're headed toward collusion, we're headed toward these things that for two years they had based their whole life on. And so it's been really interesting to watch. I believe Mueller looked at everything that was, was there. He came to the conclusions that we thought he would. Really what's been interesting up here, though, for me this week is to watch the the, the Democrats in particular look like they lost their first love. They look like the, they love the fourth graders who got their note from their the, from their their friend that says I don't want to be your friend anymore, and they've just lost their entire argument. And and now they're trying to make up something else. And so it's been really interesting to watch how it came about. This so week. where does this go now? I mean, you know, we know the bias that existed in the Justice Department and the FBI. Uh, we know those texts that were exchanged between Peter Strzok and Lisa Page and uh, Andrew McCabe now facing a criminal referral from the. IG, uh, Jim Comey still out giving interviews, trying to still keep that going as much as he can. Are we going to see criminal referrals? Are we going to see accountability on these people who actually tried to take down a duly elected president? I believe you will, and I think that's what's being uh, processed here. I I'll have to say, and you mentioned Jim Comey, it's sort of amazing to me that, I mean, how much gas does that car still have left in it? It's really, I mean, he's been out there peddling this for a long time and, and playing himself as a superhero, and there's nothing there. What we want to do, and while we're releasing transcripts, while we're going back into this, and while we're showing the investigation from the last two years, is to show that there was a cabal at the Department of Justice with McCabe and Strzok and Page and Baker and these others who actually had a political agenda. We see that from Lisa Page transcripts when you had the attorney general actually weighing in saying well really it's not going to be gross negligence with, with Ms. Clinton and before ever interviewing her they had come to their conclusions the Department of Justice under Bill Barr I believe is headed for a, uh, a cleanup if you would it's going to be going back to what its basis should be and the Department of Justice should be something Democrats Republicans independents anywhere in the between should have a Department of Justice that is carrying out the law and the truth should always be worth pursuing yeah well, well you're right and and in the last two years those some of the commentary that I have been putting out on my social media, you know, saying, look, every American should be furious about this. The fact that a small group of people decided they didn't like Donald Trump, they didn't like his personality, so we're just going to stop him. We're going to take him down based on the power seat that we hold because we are running the FBI. So let me get back to that transcript from Lisa Page because Lisa Page told you in the transcript when John Ratcliffe interviewed her that she got the word from the DOJ. Layoff of Clinton. We're not going to go and, and, and pursue gross negligence charges. So the fix was in, obviously. Is that going to be is that going to be investigated, do you think, by William Barr? Are we going to see new investigations into the Clinton email scandal? It's going to be interesting to see where that goes because with these revelations and with actually seeing this, it goes to those for, I mean, for so many years, you, uh, you and many others who pointed this out, d Republicans on the Hill were made fun of. They said, oh, you're chasing That's this. Right. This is nothing. And, and I'm sorry, we were not made fun of because this is exactly what has happened. We proved this. When you look at it, what Lisa Page said, when you look at Peter Strzok being the untouchable, I can do anything, I'll solve the world, and you look at it starting back as early as the early 2016, moving through the presidential election, through the Russia investigation, through then what started of the Mueller investigation. This is why people do not trust government. This is why people are very frustrated with politics, because when you had a Department of Justice with a small cabal that said, we are going to control what we want to control, because they felt empowered by a president who really, at many times, allowed a rule of law to be uh, skewed for political agenda. So just to be clear, take us back, since you've done so much investigating on all of this, take us back. The FBI started investigating Donald Trump at the end of 2015, right? 
Well, it goes back as far as the early 16. You see it in the 15 coming through. The real uh, situation is when they began to see that a president, uh, now President Trump, who was a candidate, then actually connecting with the American people, actually making a connection that the uh, candidate Hillary Clinton never could. In fact, that is what I believe happened here. When you see the text messages between Strzok and Page, and you see their concern about uh, Donald Trump becoming president, that's when it began to heighten up. And by the summer of 2016, when the conventions were going on, there was a concentration effort here to say we don't like this and we're going to use our positions of power my opinion abuse of power to actually begin an investigation because they didn't like what they saw happening in our electorate yeah that's another reason that I was pretty sure that they were that that they were doing wrong because at the convention we did the show live at the Democratic National Convention and I remember on day one when Debbie Wasserman Schultz's emails were hacked and we only talked about it for like an hour they immediately changed the subject from oh god my emails were hacked and now I'm on the record trashing Bernie Sanders. Now I'm on the record, you know, in the tank for Hillary and, and colluding against uh, Bernie Sanders. Let's change the subject. And the subject changed to Donald Trump colluded with the Russia. I mean, it just came out of nowhere. And so I think that that's really when the Democrats got the media on board July of 16 and just rode it, rode it hard for a year and a half. They did, and that's what you saw. And again, when you have uh, when you have this uh, process, and you see the same group doing the same things over and over, that's a pattern. Yeah. And I think Democrats just didn't want to acknowledge that because they had enough problems. Because, like you said, they were colluding against Bernie Sanders you know, to make sure Hillary Clinton got the nomination. At the end of the day, the election was about a man who had a vision for this country, who connected with people, who's now had a two-plus year record of actually helping America, standing our economy, our jobs, our people. He stands for something. He's a leader, and when we understand that we saw a person who was the Democratic candidate who didn't even know where Wisconsin was. That's why Hillary Clinton lost and the, they just couldn't get over it and that's why we ended up with some of these problems that we're seeing in investigations. Right, but they tried to delegitimize his presidency for the first two years, which was really incredible. All right, let's get to those transcripts that you've, that you've released of George Papadopoulos. Why was this so important, Congressman? It goes to the heart of the beginning of this. What we've tried to show through the ones that we've released so far, through the Orr, Page, Strzok uh, transcripts and now up to Papadopoulos, is we're showing how this actually started. This is sort of sad. Here's a young man who admitted in his own testimony, I was a wannabe Russia America policy advisor. This is somebody who was not at the middle of the Trump campaign. He met uh, the pre now president one time, and yet they attacked and went after him to try to find an opening to show a, quote, bigger picture into the Trump uh, operation. The Mueller report was really clear on this. Collusion was not happening with the Trump campaign. In fact, it went over and stated, it said, although many attempts were reached out, the Trump campaign rebuffed them. This is really sad. This shows to me a callous disregard for American citizens. It shows a callous disregard for the rights of others when they're just basically hell-bent on trying to find something to get at the uh, candidate Trump and then later on continuing with the president. All right. We know that your colleague, Devin Nunes, is going to have a lift. Uh, of, uh, criminal referrals. We're going to talk to him in the next hour. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you. Great. Good to be with you, Maria. Congressman Doug Collins joining us.